You know, God truly is good. God is doing great things. As we continue on this message series, The Great I Am. And today we're going to be talking about the reality of God as the light. You know, when I was younger, around 12 years old, I was in the Boy Scouts. And I remember going to summer camp. It's called Heritage up there by Seven Springs area. And while I was up there, we always had this camp that was our campsite every single summer. And it was right on the lake. It was a beautiful camp. And at this particular night, I knew the, I knew the paths. I knew the trails. I knew our whole campsite like the back of my hand. And I was down by the lake. And I was hanging out. It was dark. And all the dads were up on the other side of the campsite as they typically did at the, at the evening time. And they were around the, 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 the picnic tables playing cards by lantern. And really, that's the only light we had was the lantern light and the moonlight. And I was down there messing around. I decided, I'm going to go back up there. And I know these trails. And I started to run as fast as I could. And I'm running up through the campsite, getting there. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling good. Whoa! And I go right on my back. I ran into someone's clothesline. (laughs) And for like the next couple of days, I had this red mark all across my neck. That thing nailed me. I knew the trail, but in the dark, I trusted what I knew, but I didn't know what was really there. I didn't really know the dangers that were there. Because in the daytime, we know exactly where to step. We know exactly what to do. We know exactly, hey, there's a clothesline, so I better walk around this way. We see it in the daytime, but when it's dark, when the night comes upon us, All we can do is trust what we already know. All we can do is trust what we think we know. You see, light gives us confidence in where to step. That's what it does. Light gives us the confidence in everywhere we step. And I think the the thing we need to start with today is, do you trust the light? Do you trust the light? Or when you go through your life, when you go through your day-to-day, do you rely on what you feel is the right step. Can I just ask you a real question? Why do you even come to church? Why do you come to church? I'm, I'm honestly asking that, and I'm, I'm honestly asking you to wrestle with that a little bit. Because we typically come for one of two reasons. We're either coming because we want to affirm the steps that we want to take, We want to affirm our own heart, or we come seeking the heart of God. Why do you come to church? What's your purpose here? Because Jesus said, I am the light. I am the light. And we live in a very darkened world. And like me running through the campsite at at our Boy Scout camp when I was 12 years old, I think I know where to step. I think I know where it's okay to run. I think I think it's okay where to go. But when it's dark out, I don't see the clothesline. And it's going to knock me down. Jesus said in John 8, 12, for I am statement this week, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He did not say, I am a light, or I'm one of the lights, or I'm a possibility of a flashlight in your life. He said, I am the light. All light comes from me. That's what he's saying. It's the light. Whatever step we take, he's highlighting there are consequences. You see, I don't think we realize that. Every time we take a step, there's a consequence. Either the consequence is, oh, I took a good step, I'm good. Or there's a consequence, I took a bad step, and I am going down. Have you ever walked in the rain, and you're kind of going up a hill, and you're kind of being very careful because the ground's not as sturdy? And you take that one step, and before you know it, you're, you're sled riding down a mud path. Oh, I've been there. Every step we take has a consequence. And the reality is this too. Every step you take 
has a consequence in someone else's life as well. It's a ripple effect. And we all are making ripples every step we take. Every one of us. There are people that you are influencing. There are people that you are affecting probably that you don't even realize right now. You don't even see it. You don't even know it because we don't see all the ripple effects and how they go. And every consequence that we have, there's collateral damage. There's collateral consequences. It could be good or it could be bad. It all depends on what step you're taking. And so when we're walking in the dark, trusting what we know, what we think is the right step, trusting what we know should be there or the way it should be there because that's the, what I saw when it was light out, then we should be okay. And we don't even realize the collateral damage that we create and what we develop around us. You see, my friends, every step we take has a consequence. Every single one. And the statement from Jesus, I am the light, it comes with a highlight. Hey, there are consequences with you realizing I am the light. And when you see me as the light, there are consequences with that. Jesus says, whoever follows me. You see, if he is the light, that's the appropriate reality. When I went caving, and there's times when I'm caving, and it's dark and it's pitch black, and you have no idea which way to go, and you're thinking, how in the world am I going to get out of here? What are you looking for? Light. Because when I see the light in the cave, I know the pathway out. I know the direction I'm supposed to take. And if Jesus is truly the light, as he says he is, which I believe he is, then it's appropriate to follow his instructions to follow me. Follow me as the light. And he said, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Here's the consequence, the good consequence. But they will have the light of life. You know, light is one of the most powerful things this world knows, sees. The most powerful thing that exists. Because light provides warmth. Light provides direction. Light provides power. Light is everything to this world. And Jesus is saying, I'm the light. I am your everything. I'm your direction. I am your strength. I am your warmth. I am your comfort. I am everything you need. I am the light. And when you follow me as the light, then you'll receive the light of life. Everything you're searching for will come through me. But here's the thing we need to realize. Light always breaks through darkness. We live in a very dark and broken world, a beat up world. But light always wins. You guys know this. I mean, tonight when, when it's dark and you're in your bedroom, turn out the lights and then flip on the lights. What's going to win? The light every time. Every time the light will shine through. And Jesus said, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. You'll never walk in darkness. Those opportunities of being clotheslined in the, in, the, in the woods in the dark, they'll not happen as often if you follow me. He said to follow me to the light of life. And I think this is where we wrestle with in modern day church. See, guys, can I just be honest? In modern day church, in the 1900s, it's really developed within the churches. And we've come, to be, come with the, identi the identification, if you will, that Jesus is looking for believers. And we see it in our terminology over and over again. He just says, hey, we're just trying to make believers. You know, if you just believe in him. When, when that is true, yes, we want to believe with him, but that's a starting point. All throughout the Bible, we see Jesus calling for followers. That's why he calls believers only like two or three times in the New Testament. But you want to see what word is used over and over and over again, like 430 sometimes throughout the New Testament? Disciple. A follower. 
Jesus did not die on the cross just so that we can believe. He died on the cross so that we can follow him. Belief is the beginning of that journey. But it's not the end all be all of that journey. And when we follow him, we experience his light. If you're just living a life where I believe in him, but nothing about you is changing, nothing about you is really following him in your day to day, I can probably guarantee you're not experiencing his light in your life. Because his light comes the more you follow him, the more you walk with him. That's what Jesus said. That's what he says. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will experience that light in their life. That's what he said. And he revealed that when we do that, when we follow his light, when Jesus becomes the lead of my life, then there are good consequences he brings into our life. The light of life. And from the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus focused on the reality of following him and what that looked like and what he did and developed within us when he called his disciples in Matthew 4, 19. Jesus said to his disciples when he was calling them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I will work in your life. You see, in this verse, Jesus highlights the consequences of following him, the reality of following him. I don't know about you, but when I wake up in the middle of the night and I need to go to a certain room, I usually try to walk through the space in my house to get to the restroom. I trust what I know of the hallways. But here's the problem. Maybe your house is like ours. Sometimes you tend to leave just stuff lying around. Sometimes because things are lying around, certain doors are left open. And I can't tell you how many times I've woken up in the middle of the night, I get out of my bed, and I'm trying to navigate myself through the hallway because I know the hallway. I've walked this hallway for like 15 years. I'm good. All of a sudden, oh my goodness, my toe. I just busted my toe because I kicked something on the floor. And then I'm like the three stooges, and I turn around the corner, and because there's stuff on the floor and one door is left open, I see up and boom, I knock my head. I can't tell you how many nights I'm just trying to get to the bathroom with a busted toe, and my head's hurting because I just walked into a door. Because I thought I knew what was supposed to be in that hallway, but I didn't realize all the elements that we left in that hallway that became an obstacle course in the dark. And now I'm paying the price because of it. You see, the more we walk in the dark, the more we struggle with all the obstacles. In your life, as you try to navigate your own life, do you tend to trust yourself more? Like, I know this path. I know where I'm supposed to step. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know how to get through this. I know how to deal with this. I know what I feel. Only to stub your toe, so to speak. Only run into a door and knock your head off. (laughs) Or do you say, you know what? I may think I know this hallway, but I need to turn on the light because I can't see. That's the only way I can navigate through this. Even though it's such familiar territory for me, I've walked this walk how many times? But there's always something that pops up. You see, guys, at some point in your life, you have to choose. At some point, you need to make the choice. Is he the light in your life? Or are you going to trust yourself? Are you going to choose your heart or God's heart? Why do you come here? So that he can say, boy, yeah, you're doing it? Or I want to know his heart. I want to know him. And I want the light to transform me because that's the only way. That's the only way. You see, the consequences that we deal with in our life, that we experience, are developed more and more by who we choose to follow. That's where it all comes from. And you, newsflash, 
are following someone or something. I know I have people tell me all the time, I choose my own life. I choose my own path. I'm doing my own thing. Okay, that sounds great. But the more I ask questions, the more we come to reality that, hey, there is someone in your life or something in your life that is influencing you and directing your steps. Every one of us is following something. And the consequences we experience in our life is ultimately from the very thing that we're choosing to follow. Whether we're choosing to follow because we made that decision or we're just kind of walking and going with the flow. We're choosing to follow something or someone. And Jesus said, follow me. You want to have my light in your life? Follow me. Whoever follows me, he said, will never walk in darkness. You will never stub your toe. You will have the light of life. You know, all throughout the Bible, there are a lot of references to the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. And I don't want to steal too much thunder here because in two weeks, I hope you're here, we're going to be talking about Jesus as the good shepherd. And there is so much in that one reference. And I hope you're here with us in two weeks. But to kind of give you a quick snapshot of that, because all throughout the Bible, we see the reference of Jesus as the shepherd in our life. If you go back to the Old Testament, in Psalm 23, we see this verse so often. We read it so often at funerals. And in our mind, Psalm 23 is more about death, when in reality, this psalm's all about life. Jesus as the light. Let me read this verse, these verses in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Are you guys familiar with those verses? You've heard those before, right? There's so much here. And like I said, I'm not going to get into all these verses today because in two weeks we're going to really dive into Jesus as the shepherd. I hope you're here with us. But one thing I want to highlight that kind of comes together with Jesus as the light is the relationship with the shepherd. Jesus as the light. In that relationship, we lack nothing. You lack nothing. And this relationship is all developed on trust. What do you trust? I fear that so often, because we live in such a broken world, because every one of us at some level have, has experienced relationships where trust was broken. Your trust was violated in some way. And if we're all going to be honest, I think we all can just say, in some way, our trust was violated by someone in our life. And because we're such relational people, that's how God wired us. We've been talking about that. He created us that way. Every relationship builds upon every relationship. Every relationship has an impact on another relationship. And the same is true with God. And I fear some of you sitting here today or watching us online struggle with trusting God because someone in your life has violated trust with you. Maybe you didn't have a great relationship with your dad. You know, there's, there's a lot to go into the reality that our relationship with our dad affects our relationship with God. Maybe there's someone in your life that you really looked up to. Maybe they were a spiritual leader in your life that let you down, that failed you in some way. Maybe it was directly to you or maybe it was something they did. Or maybe you saw who they were out and about and you're like, I don't, I don't like that. And your trust was violated. If that's you, can I just gently tell you, I'm sorry. My heart breaks. 
there's been people in my life who I considered spiritual giants, who I thought, man, that's the person I want to be like. Only years later to find, boy, they fell into sin or something happened or something developed in their life or they changed their tune. And I had to learn something. My trust in God cannot be dependent on the trust in somebody else because they're not God. They're just as messed up as I am. It's kind of like when we go play golf, okay? I am not a huge golfer. I'll be honest with you, I I enjoy golf for about nine holes, and after nine holes, I'm kind of like, all right, let's go find something else to do. Where's the hot dogs? Right? But as I'm out there, I get scared to death because I'm not a good golfer. And I hear all these people talk about, yeah, I did this, I hit this nine, I did this different stuff, and, 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 and I get out there, and the problem is, golf is one of those sports where everybody just stands around and watches you hit the ball. And I have a lot of anxiety with that. I'm just being real with you right now. All right? And so when I get up to the tee, I got all this anxiety pouring, pumping through my my body. Because it's like, can you guys just turn the other way? And then not only are they watching, there's another group of eight guys who are waiting for us to get done. And now they're all watching. And if you're near the, the, the restaurant, you got people on the deck who are watching you, probably saying things to you or talking about you. And it's like, Can you all just stop watching me for a minute? I just want to hit the ball. And I swing, and I nail that ball for about two feet. Oh, yeah. But I've golfed with some of you guys. And I know you're just as bad as me. And it makes me feel so much better. The same is true in life. I had to come to a real reality check in my journey. I love people. There's people who have been great mentors in my life and who've meant a lot to me in my development and my spiritual journey. But I had to come to grips with their people just like me. Their mess ups just like me. They probably sit there at night some nights just like I've done and I wonder, God, how how am I going to get through this tomorrow? I am so weak. And how am I supposed to lead other people when I feel so weak? I've been there. We all have. You know why? Because we're not God. We're not the light. Guys, I'm not the light. He is. He's the light. And sadly, too many of us have had our relationship with Jesus fractured because someone broke trust in our life, and we have to work through that. And if that's you, if I'm speaking to you right now, you know, if someone has broken trust with you and you're just struggling in your view of God, let's talk. Our elders are available. Our leaders at this church, our growth group leaders, we're all here because we've all been there. We may not have all the answers, but we can walk through it. We can walk through it. Because ultimately, to understand and trust Jesus as the light, as the shepherd, as we'll talk more in two weeks, we have to trust him. Everything is developed on that trust. And in Psalm 23, the Bible says, when we trust him as the lead, listen to this, listen guys, when we trust Jesus as the light, when we trust him as the lead, the Bible says, then he makes me lie down. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me. You see that path that, go, that we go on with Jesus as the lead? It's this journey that develops. Verse, he makes us lie down. I don't know about you, but sometimes he needs to force me just to sit down and just be in his presence. Because in his presence is where all the power is. It's where all strength is. And then through that, he begins the journey. He leads, he refreshes, he guides. Don't miss this, my friends. Jesus, when he is our guide, when he is our light, he always leads us to that safe place. 
He always leads us to a place that we will be refueled. We will be refreshed. We will be strengthened. We will be built up. It doesn't mean the darkness goes away. It doesn't mean the world gets easier. But you get stronger because you have this, the light guiding you and leading you. That's what he's talking about. Because the psalmist writes, even though I walk through the darkest valley. The promise is this. In this world, we will always have valleys to walk through. We will always have dark places that we have to navigate through. But when Jesus is our lead, he will guide us through it all. He will guide us through it all. But we continually find ourselves in those dark places. But we need to trust him, his lead that guides us. And when so doing, as the psalmist shares, he, he makes us. He leads us, he refreshes us. As Jesus told the disciples, follow me and I will make you. He is the one who's gonna work in us. He is gonna transform us. You see, Jesus as our shepherd will transform our hearts to experience the light of life. That's what he does. And Netflix really made a bad ideology of Jesus recently, this past couple few years. We've, we've gone to believe that whatever we struggle with, whatever we're walking through, you know, if we just pray it away, it will go away. And that's not true. Yes, pray is a powerful thing, but what the world misses is the reality of just being in his presence, of following him, of applying his path in my life and seeing what he will do. This is all about dependency. And here's the truth, guys. We all depend on something. We all depend on something to get us through every day. Maybe it's something when the dark places come, when the hardship is overwhelming us, we try to find something to just get our mind off it, to take the pain away. And some of you may be struggling with that right now. Maybe you've turned to things like alcohol or, or drugs or some other relationship just to help take the pain of life away just to take the hardship away, to get your mind off it. But when the high of that drug or the alcohol rush or whatever it may be goes away, it's still there. It's still there. But the light is what guides when we depend on him. We all depend on something. And what the Bible says is depend on him. And when we depend on him, he gives us the strength to get through every day. But when we tend to depend on other things in our life, in relationships or other things, it kind of gives us self-confidence that we think we can get through the darkness on our own. But then before you know it, you're stubbing your toe and you're hitting your head against the door. And you're back to where you were. Guys, what do you depend on in your life? just to get through each day? What do you grab a hold of just to try to escape the hardships in your life, the pain in your life? Because it just doesn't last, does it? Maybe now's the time to give Jesus a try and depend on him fully and see the strength that only comes through here. Because the cold hard reality is this. So much of the struggles of walking in the darkness around us is a lot of times because of the darkness within us. And this is when it gets real. Like I said, light always breaks through darkness. And we want the light to guide us. We want the light around us to take all the bad stuff away. But at some point, the light needs to come in us. And deal with the dark stuff in our space inside. And that's for like, ah, let's not go there. My friends, so many of us so often are living lives with so much darkness in our heart that it is impossible to experience a light in our life. 
The psalmist wrote this in Psalm 139. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You see, leading up to these verses, up to this point to verse 23 and 24, the psalmist reveals something very powerful. God already knows everything about you. There is nothing you can hide from him. He already knows you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your choices. He knows what you did last night. He knows what you watched last night. He knows what you did on your computer the other day. He knows everything about you. Which leads to the question, why do we come to these verses and then Psalmist, David writes here, search me God, know my heart, reveal my heart to me. It's like God already knows what's in there. You know the point? What David's getting to here is a place of surrender. God, you already know everything about me. And I want you to be the light around me. But I've been putting up this roadblock of allowing you to be the light in me. And it's time for me to turn on the light switch in my heart. I need you here. Because nothing around here will get better until you fix in here. And I need the light in here. God, I'm surrendering my heart to you. Search me. Show me. Lead me. Guide me. That's what David's writing here. This, my friends, is an opportunity for us to pause and just to be in his presence. And his presence is the most powerful thing in this world. The most powerful thing. And when we allow his light to shine in the darkest places of our heart, that place that you don't want to go to, that place that you don't want anybody to talk to you about, that very place, when you allow the light to get into that space, he will lead us in the way of everlasting He will lead us to the light of life. If you just follow him. But you know what this involves? Repentance. What comes after surrender is repentance. God, search me, know me, and lead me in that way. I'm done walking this way. I'm done allowing what's in here to rule my life. Lead me. Guide me. There's something amazing here in that psalm. A phrase that's thrown in there that I think is so powerful that we often overlook. The psalmist says, know my anxious thoughts. I think at some level we all struggle with anxiety, don't we? I know I do. And the more the darkness just rules our hearts, we struggle with confidence and we struggle with anxiety. And the psalmist is highlighting here, when we get to a place of full surrender to him, a a place where we say, okay, I am following you as my lead, there is where our confidence is found. There is where our strength is found. You see, our confidence does not come from following the lead of my own heart or your own heart. Our confidence comes from following Jesus as the light. And when we follow Jesus as the light, he gives us confidence and confidence in our purpose. He died on the cross to save us from death and he came out of that tomb to give us a purpose in our life. And when we follow him as our lead, he gives us confidence in that purpose. And Jesus said when he was talking to the disciples, follow me and I will make you Fishers of men. You see, when we follow him as the light, we become a reflection of the light. That's the result. That's the path. We become hope in this world. 
We, all around us, it's broken. All around us, this world is in darkness. It's in that valley. It's in that hard place. And we're all in that same place. We're searching for victory. We're longing to find victory in the brokenness and, and the darkness. And the psalmist wrote in Psalm 44, verse 3, it was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did, they, did the, their arm bring them victory. It was, listen to this, guys. It was your right arm, Jesus. Your arm and the light of your face, for you loved them. Jesus said whenever Peter grabbed the sword to slice off the ear of the soldiers when they arrested him, Peter, put that away. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. Our victory, everlasting victory, is not found in any way of this world. Our victory in all the brokenness and darkness that all around us is only through the light of his face. For he loved us. That's where victory is. You see, my friends, ultimately, all the power of light, the reality of light is God in action. That's what light is. It's God working all around us. The sun, you know what that resembles? God at work. The sunlight is the thing that provides all the light in our world. Everything runs by the power of that sun. And the moon at night is a reflection of that. See, biblically speaking, God, Jesus, the Son, his light is God at work every day. And the moonlight reveals a reflection of God working through others. The more we run towards him as the light, the more we become the moon. Our goal our purpose are to be moons, to be the reflection of him. The hard thing is this world is filled with so many voices, so many influences all around us, so many opinions of how we should navigate through the darkness. And all these voices, all these influences develop all these different elements that we have to walk through. That causes us to stub our toes or hit our heads or, or even worse, running into a clothesline. And the question is, how do we navigate through all that? Except through his light. It's kind of like an athlete training for a championship. If you want to be a great athlete, you know that you have to go harder than everybody else. A great athlete go, puts in the strict training when nobody else is watching to win. One of the greatest football coaches of all time was Vince Lombardi. You guys have heard of him. And he famously said, winning is not everything, it's the only thing. That's what he said. In fact, the Super Bowls were all named after, were all started by him, and the trophy, trophies were named after him. And when he led the Green Bay Packers to win Super Bowl number two, they got their Super Bowl ring. And on that ring, Vince Lombardi had them write, run to win. So all the Green Bay Packers for Super Bowl two had on their ring, run to win. You see, Vince Lombardi, he was a man trying to chase after God's own heart. And this phrase, run to win, was just a paraphrase from 1 Corinthians, which reads this. Do, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. See, there's an ultimate goal, an ultimate praise, the prize that we're going after, the light of life, of everlasting. That's what we are chasing after. And we use phrases like this in the Bible, these verses like this, in many cases to justify our competitive spirit in our sporting events. But there's something bigger here. There's something bigger here. You see, my friends, what matters the most is the motivation of your heart. What are you chasing? What are you going after? Why are you here? What are you looking for? 
What light are you pursuing? It's not so much about what you do. It's about who you are depending on that matters most. You can do all the right rituals, but if you're not depending on him and following him as the light, you're missing it. You're missing it. Another quote from Vince Lombardi as we wrap things up. He said this, when we place our dependence on God, we are unencumbered and we have no worry. In fact, we may even be reckless insofar as part in the production is concerned. This confidence, this sureness of action is both contagious and an aid to the perfect, perfect action. The rest is in the hands of God. And in this same God, gentlemen, who, was, who has won all his battles up to now. End quote. Why can we trust God as the light, Jesus as the light? Because of his track record. His track ref- record is pretty flawless. Now his track record is perfect. It gives us the ability to trust him as the light. God's faithfulness, how he always comes through, gives us the confidence to trust him as the light. Are you depending on him? Are you following him? Let him be the light of your life. And then you will become a moon to bring hope to other people. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you because you are good. And we lean on you for your strength and your hope. And Lord, right now, I just pray that we may just come to you and experience you. Lord, I know there's some people who are present right now. Maybe they've been struggling their trust of you because of the way that others have violated their trust. Lord, I pray for healing in their heart that they may see you. Father, there may be some right now in our presence that because of the hurting that they have in their life, the brokenness that they're trying to walk through, they're leaning on other things to depend on just to get their mind off it or to, or to get them um, into a space where they can kind of get through each day. But Lord, those things don't last. Help us to depend on you. Lord, may you be the light of our life. Lord, search us that we may fully surrender to you and that we may follow your lead. It's in your name we pray. Amen.